Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, it's back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play by Email with the devilish Mr. Laudrick, and I've already kind of spoiled part of this episode a little bit by telling you we had just an absolute disaster off of the coast of Suva. Um... And just, just to set that up a little bit, I'm going to draw, because I like to draw, uh, I'm going to draw what's kind of going on here. If you've got the west coast of the U.S. here, and you've got Pearl Harbor there, as you come around, let's just say Australia's here, it's probably a little further away than that, but let's just say that's Australia, because I'm obviously an artist. Uh, if that's Australia, what have you got going on? Well, you've got Palmyra. You've got Christmas Island. Out here, you've got the Marquesas Islands. That's Haiva Oa and the other Oa. I can't remember the name of it right now. You've got Tahiti. But then up here, you've got what I call the Iron Ring or the Iron Wall. That is Pago Pago, Suva, and I'm going to draw that a little bigger, and Nomaya. OK, and those three islands as the allied player are really your wall against the Japanese as the Japanese extend down here. They should take, you know, Canton and Baker Island, these island, these smaller islands here and they push. Now, Suva is worth worth worse, worth the most amount of points. Uh, it's actually worth quite a few points and it's got a nice large airfield. It's got a good sized port that you can build into even a bigger port. Suva arguably is the most important island in the Pacific once you get away from Pearl Harbor. Now, you know, Palmyra and Christmas, of course, you don't want the Japanese getting this close to your main base at Pearl Harbor, uh, but you're also close enough you can defend those. This is way out here. It's, you know, it's not halfway. It's closer to Australia than it is to Pearl Harbor by, by a good measure. Now, down here, you also have New Zealand, which is not that big in relation to Australia, but you get the idea. You've got New Zealand here. Now, what I generally like to do is set up at Haiva Oa, set up at Tahiti. So we've got a back line and then we can supply into Pago Pago which is the main American base Suva which is the main uh, Kiwi base it's a key, it starts off as a Kiwi base but really you just dump American stuff into there if you can and then Nomaya is really out of Australia okay so what was I trying to do well I'm all constantly bringing stuff around here now in an ideal game when you're playing the AI or someone that's not very good you can bring it around this way to Australia but with the way Lodrick plays how aggressive he's been I'm bringing it all the way south now it's slower but it's safer and then we go through New Zealand and on to Australia if we want or up okay well, what was going on here? I was bringing the 134th Infantry, some planes, I think a base force. There was all kinds of stuff in that task force. And they got to about here, and I said, hmm, it appears that his main carrier task force is out of here. So let's head north and try to sneak something into Suva. That is what's going on in this episode uh, as we see the conflagration upon the the Pacific. I knew it was bad news when Lodrick sent me the file and said, the ocean is burning. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. This is going to be the combat save from January 16th and 17th of 1942. And let's jump right in. I say jump right in. I just talked for five minutes, but let's jump in now and see everything that happens this turn, including, and we'll drill down and look at everything we lose as we try to motor into Suva. Now, what Lodrick did, which is very smart, and if you're a Japanese player, you you know should think about doing, is he sat off to the north of Suva and just waited. And when he finally you know picked up that we were coming into Suva, then his carriers moved straight down. Uh, I don't know if they had gone to refuel. I don't believe they would have had enough time to because that was that same task force or at least part of it that had gone up and down the Australian coast. But it doubled back or at least it went back and refueled very quickly and got right back out to Suva. And uh, too bad. 
too bad for us, too bad for the 134th Infantry, which I have been told uh, it was the pride of Minnesota. So uh, apologies to any Minnesotans that are watching. And I, I think it's all lost. I, I don't think there was anybody... Uh, I think momentarily they get fished out of the the ocean. Uh, they get put on another transport, and it gets blown away as well. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's been a couple of days since I watched this one. And the first thing, as always, is we have some task forces merging. I can tell you that w what was merging up there by India was uh, the Hermes, which is now headed towards Aden to get repaired. Uh, it did take a couple of hits, as you remember, in the Battle of Port Blair, uh, but it survived. It actually didn't have that much major damage. It should be repaired. I think the game told me uh, when I went to set this next turn up, or once it gets to uh, Aiden, I think it's about 50 or 60 days of repair. All right, uh, first action here, uh, Lodric sweeping, uh, the Japanese sweeping up just to the southwest of Changsha. I think this is uh, Heng Yang. Uh, we do have a large force there. Now, he had come up the road from Kukong. It looks like he's actually turned around, at least for the time being. Uh, we've got a battle here over Tongu. It's 17 Oscars. Two buffaloes is all we could get in the air. And these buffaloes aren't going to last long against uh, good Japanese pilots, good Japanese planes. And as you see, they didn't last even past this turn. Uh, two destroyed buffaloes there. Uh, he's got nine Oscars coming up and over Rangoon. We got 15 of the Flying Tigers up, but the Flying Tigers have really been neutered in this game. Uh, this time, they hold their own. We got 15 up, one destroyed. Now, I can tell you, um, you know, Lodric has just done a better job against the Flying Tigers than anyone I've ever seen. It's got to be his pilot uh, rotation. He must be bringing his very, very good pilots in here because uh, usually the Flying Tigers will rip up the Japanese, especially against the AI. The AI, you know, just doesn't optimize like a human will. And uh, as they come into Rangoon, they just get ripped up by the Flying Tigers. But he has actually really torn us up a little bit with the Flying Tigers. Here's another squadron of the Flying Tigers that I have back here just west of Changsha. Uh, he had a zero sweep over the top. Nothing happened. One zero one. I would have loved to watch the dog fight, uh, but nothing going on there. Uh, a sweep over Yanan. Okay, we don't have any planes over there. Not really. Uh, now he's going to be bombing into the Philippines here. This is into Cebu. Uh, there's nothing we can do to stop him in the Philippines. Uh, it's eventually he will have it all, uh, but you know, decided to bomb out there to make it a little easier on himself, I guess. The usual bombing runs now happening in Southeast China as we continue to try to get these three stacks to safety. I keep Every turn, I move them back to move because they go to combat phase as they get bombed hard enough. Um, and I get them back to move, and they go about six miles a turn. Well, every uh, hex is, what, 48 miles, I believe. So it's going to take a long time to get them to safety. All right, we got some Flying Tigers up against some Oscars again. And we'll see how this plays out. A 58 Oscars. So, I mean, he's bringing the kitchen sink uh, at us. Uh, two destroyed Flying Tigers there. We get no Japanese losses, dang it. All right, he's bombing. Now, one thing uh, that I wanted to mention, I am pulling completely out of... Uh, Cheng Chao and Luoyang. Um, they just became untenable. He has blocked off supply by getting into Nanyang. And so I had also brought this unit up the way from, I, I say this unit, this stack of units up the road uh, from, I wish there was a road, up the way, up the river, let's say, from Ai Cheng. He's now bombing into that. We damage three planes and take 62 casualties, but I've had to give up Cheng Chao and Luoyang. 
uh, they just weren't getting the units were not getting supply there and you've got a massive number of units you can't allow them to starve out so we're on the move and as you can see he's trying to get into cyan so i have these units running running to get to cyan uh, cyan is really really tough to recover from if you lose it uh, spoiler we do <laughs> I, I gotta. I, I, it's hard for me to keep secrets when I know something's gonna happen. Uh, we're about three turns ahead as I go through this combat with you, and uh, we do lose Cyan. But but the situation. We'll go through it. One of these setups. The situation is not exactly dire in China. We've kind of stabilized it, uh, but he's coming after Cyan, and this is a massive. Ma oh, this one. I'm sorry. He's bombing into us. This is a massive force. Uh, I think it's got 3,500 attack value. Uh, 78 sallies come in. We damage five. I would love to know how many of these he's actually losing. 59 casualties. Because if we're just damaging them, they're going back to base, getting repaired. Uh, we're really taking the brunt of it. If some of those are, when I say some, if let's say a third of these are not making it back to base and are actually losing the plane and pilot, uh we can we can take these kind of losses 96 one and one on the damage again we don't know we think we hit it we don't know if it made it back to base or not i love the fog of war in this game 34 casualties reported on that bombing run you know down into the southeastern uh china corridor 21 casualties there no plane uh hits that we know about six ands into this group uh six casualties reported there all right, now we have another stack over here that is nominally trapped. Uh, it's going to try to get up here and link up. Now, you can't see the forces in Luoyang. Sometimes, I don't know if that's because of fog of war, and he sees the same, uh, you know, readout that we do, and so the game hides certain things that, that don't have detection level i think that that's how it works i've never played both sides at the same time but i think that that's how it works um so you don't see all of our troops at loyang we have a stack just as big as the one at cheng chow at loyang um they're all gonna congregate up here on this road this unit or this stack of units is trying to get there we take 49 casualties there he, it looks like he's almost got us surrounded, uh, but I think we can get out of there. As a matter of fact, I know we do, um, and move up. We're not quite linked up with those other guys, though. We got to get linked up because he's, what he's done is he's consolidated down into just massive armies that are running around and just bullying everything on the map. Six Tojos over the top of Changsha on a sweep. Nothing going on there. Uh, two more Oscars. Uh, gonna sweep out over Hang Yang. Nothing happening there. He sweeps across Tangu again. I think he's destroyed all of those buffaloes now that were at Tangu. Again, usually those buffaloes do a lot of damage to the Japanese, but uh, Logic's a whole different beast than playing the AI because he's gonna rotate his good pilots, his good planes up front, and when he does that, uh, it makes our job a lot more difficult. Okay, the cap over Rangoon is deploying again. Uh, it looks like we only got one plane up. He had three Oscars come in. Uh, no losses on either side there. We're spotting some things over Palembang. It's only a matter of time before he comes after the big, pr the big fuel and oil prize of Palembang. 29 lilies in on this group that's just south of Cyan. Uh, what I was trying to do with this group is block him from crossing the river and then attacking Cyan this way, the reason I wanted to do it that way is because I would rather he have to attack Cyan across the river here. Um, that didn't really work out. So, but that was the basic idea. Uh, bombing into southeastern China again. We've seen that script before. 55 casualties, no Japanese uh, hits that we know of. Uh, bombing into another group that's trying to get up to Cyan. This damages two planes, and we take no casualties. I was like that. Um, that was the 38th Chinese Corps throwing chaff in the air, evidently. Okay. Uh, this is this poor unit that was originally in Pakao. Uh, it got knocked out of there. It's just kind of been wandering around trying to get back up here to Nanning. 
uh, and it's just never made it yet. Same deal. I keep trying to get it to move up here, but as it gets bombed, it stops in place, and it, it just won't ever get moving. So if you play the Japanese, that's another benefit of all of this bombing is the Chinese just don't have freedom of movement. They take cover, you know, as the bombers come in, and it causes them to move at a very slow rate. We take 27 casualties there, uh, more into southeastern China. Uh, it's going to be, I'm going to throw a celebration when we finally get to this hex. That's where they're all routed to, is this hex here. If we, well, if if we get there, uh, I'm going to throw a real nice party for those guys. What a march. Constantly being bombed three to four times every turn. Uh, yeah, China's been far more interesting in this game than I think any other game I've ever played. Okay, he's bombing in here uh, to where we have our Flying Tigers. Nine zeros sweeping across the top. We've got one Flying Tiger here. He disappears. Now it could be just that he went back to base, and it is. So they come back over the base at 21,000 feet. Uh, smart. Uh, why is he flying them at that altitude? Well, if we're flying at 20,000, he's got the altitude advantage, and really, uh, those flying tigers, you can't really take them much above 20,000. So he's always going to have the altitude advantage, and that's something about air war, the airfare, <laughs> the air to air war in this game, is that uh, the higher altitude you are, uh, you get a bonus for that, you get an advantage for that. All right, lots of sightings there, and then these poor guys just north of Pakao uh, getting hit again. 20 casualties reported. I like to go through the sightings uh, again with you guys too. Uh, I, I think it adds something to the game for you to see kind of at least where we were getting reports of, of Japanese activity. Uh, six casualties on the ground. Our, our pack cow boys uh, take six more casualties. I think all in they've, they've gotten, you know, 100 or 150 casualties this turn. Hasn't really started bombing Java yet, uh, or Sumatra. Uh, and somebody had mentioned in the comments, uh, I think the infamous Bayard, uh, that uh, he's he's kind of late to landing in Sumatra and Java, or in that area. Uh, that doesn't even include Celebus. He hasn't really landed in Celebus yet. Uh, probably a little late on that schedule. Now, I, I don't mean that as a criticism. He's doing a wonderful job. Uh, but... You know, for our purposes, it's good to see that he's probably behind schedule a little bit uh, on parts of the Dutch East Indies. Um, okay, uh, this is the attack on Clark Field. Uh, of course, this is always coming, whether you're playing the AI, a human, or otherwise. Uh, you know, the Japanese, you cannot stop them in the Philippines from... You know, if you're playing anyone with just a basic level of competence. Uh, and so this was always going to happen. It's just a matter of how much we can try to bloody his nose. And you can see the adjusted assault. Uh, Lodrick has 2617. We've got 847. Uh, Japanese assault odds, 3 to 1. Now, we did have a fort level 2, so that helps. That's why the adjusted, you know, ours pops up a little bit from the raw. Uh, if we go down here, we had the combat modifiers. We had a plus terrain, plus leaders, minus on experience. Uh, he took 1,281 casualties. We took 2,932. So about two and a half to one on the casualties there. A little bit better than what we've been doing. Um, not the worst result in the world. Now he's attacking into Davo, uh, and he has now captured Davo. And we will retreat back up here to Malay Balai. I just like to say that. So the Japanese capture Davao on the southern part of Mindanao, part of the Philippine island chain. All right, now we're ex expanding our fortifications, and so that always is kind of your signal. That's the end of that day. That happens at the end of the pulse. Um, land, land warfare is kind of the last action every time, usually. 
uh, unless there's kind of a, a strange ship to ship can sometimes happen after that. But usually it's the land attack phase that's the last uh, bit of the pulse. Then you get the uh, fortifications and things arriving then are the very last thing that happen. And then you click over to the next day. So this was January 16th and 42. Uh, we haven't yet seen the uh, disaster at Suva. That's coming, unfortunately. And there you see it. End of day. There you see, we get the CV Indomitable at Aden. Uh, so our first real British carrier has arrived. Now the British carriers are kind of strange. We'll look at them in the setup. Uh, they have two squadrons of fighters and one uh, squadron of torpedo bombers. Um, they're just not set up like the US carriers at all. So we'll go talk about it uh, in the setup phase for this time. Uh, but that's just great news. I mean, we need all the help we can get. You can see we also got the 19th Australian up at Aden. Um, now, the temptation, or what I think what the normal play is, is to move those straight down to Australia out of Aden. It takes them forever to get there. Uh, so what I do instead is I put them into Karachi, and I deploy those Australian uh regiments that you get at Aden, I deploy them in India, and then I bring American regiments to Australia. Now you may say, well, America to Australia is a lot further. Well, I get that, um, but your American regiments, what, where else would you put them? I mean, you're not going to sail those all the way to India, uh, so it makes more sense to put the Americans in Australia and put the Australians in India. It's all part of the old Commonwealth, my friends. Now, one thing as we, uh, well, first of all, amphibious assault at Babo, uh, Task Force 212 is unloading on the beaches of Babo, and so now he's, you know, expanding. Um, first down here in Papua New Guinea, uh, he's also up at Lowak uh, here in Celebus. So he has landed on Celebus, but uh, it's a little bit, a little bit behind where you would maybe think he would be given how aggressive he is in other parts of this game um i was about to make such a profound point and now i forget what it is well i'm not sure if it's that profound uh, if i can't remember it i'm sure it'll come back to me Naval movement phase. Well, here we go. Uh, first of all, we've got a Japanese sub off of Suva, and that gets into a little AKL. That's one of our one-point cargo ships. Those are the ones that, you know, you got to send them into the line of fire because ultimately you can't let the troops here starve out. So you got to, no matter what you think he's got here, you got to try to keep sending these up here. Now, luckily, they're only worth one point, and you get just an absolute uh, you know, bevy of them. Uh, but there we lose the Iowan uh, 1. AKL. Now I was okay with that, uh, but then I started seeing this. Uh, we started sighting Japanese aircraft over that task force, and that's not good. <laughs> that's that's always that's when you get a lump in your throat uh okay uh flying tigers the ones that we have based here just behind just to the west of Chengshaw. uh he's doing another sweep with the zeros over the top of this so uh, we'll see if we survived that uh yeah we did nobody took any losses there we had one flying tiger up against nine zeros well done my friend he survived i mean that's about all you could expect there now he's got 10 oscars sweeping out uh, over to the southwest of Changsha. okay so at this point of the turn i was feeling pretty good when i watched this the first time through i was like okay this has been one of our better turns as far as 
you know, just kind of holding on, which is what you're trying to do in January of 42. Uh, he's taken a few places, Davo and things like that. But uh, though that's to be expected. We hung on at Clark Field. Uh, we haven't had any ships sunk except for a one-point cargo ship. Uh, the usual bombing's been going on. Uh, that's when things take a left-hand turn, though. All right, he's bombing this group uh, north of Pak Pak Wow Pakau. Sure, Pakau is probably how it's pronounced. Nine Nels in southeastern China, over and over and over. Uh, now he's bombing into Cyan, leading me to believe he's going to try to capture Cyan. 30 Lilies, 77 Sallies. Now we get a Chinese aircraft up, the I-15, or at least a Chinese uh, piloted airplane, uh, and we get one of the Flying Tigers up. Against bombers like that, you really should be able to knock out some. Um, and as you see, the H-81, the Flying Tiger, chased after him. Now we did pretty well here. Four damaged Sallies, okay? One destroyed and two damaged lilies. Now, who knows uh, with these how many made it back to base. We we confirm one destroyed. Uh, and we took 67 casualties. We did not lose either plane that we put in the air. So that was nice. Uh, we finally got up against bombers. Nothing but bombers. Uh, the Oscars and the Zeros are his main fighters. The lilies and the Sallies and the Ans are his main bombers and so it was all bombers in there unescorted and we actually had a little bit of success there uh we damaged one lily here 240 casualties my goodness that's partially because we're on the move but we've got we've got to try to be i mean we've got to try to get out of there before we're completely trapped 24 casualties here okay we've got this group that's in between kukong and uh, shansen I'm trying to, to get, well, I was trying to get over here to Kukong and cut this Japanese stack off. So we controlled Chansen, right? I was trying to get all of these troops back here. He was bringing a big force up the road. So I said, you know what? He's, uh, you know, looks like he's moved most everything out of Kukong up the road. Let's try to jump over and take Kukong. Uh, nine Ida's, 19 Sonia's. We took 26 casualties. And then he's going to bomb them again with 15 Ida's. Six casualties reported there. And then he's going to... Oh, I thought he was going to bomb again. Instead, he sweeps over Changsha with six Tojos. The Oscar's coming in. Uh, he sweeps over Tongu. And he... Oh, there was one Buffalo left there. Well, let's see if it survived. Yeah, we got one buffalo left there that got up and cap. The poor gents trying to get back to Yunnan. That is a ragtag army that's left. He, he can't get very many casualties against these groups anymore because there are just not that many men left. Uh, you couldn't drop enough bombs to, to hit most of these guys. Uh, 15 casualties reported. Thirteen Sonia's in on this group. Okay, 10 casualties there. This is third war area. I'm trying to get them all to link up right here behind the river. We'll see. I'm, uh, you know, they've been moving forever. Uh, five casualties. As a matter of fact, it's kind of made me start to rethink uh, China a little bit against a, in a very good player. And that is to leave most of what we've got in Southeast China, just leave it right where it is. Uh, because it doesn't do you any good to move them back. Now against the AI and against a mediocre player, you can move those back. And here we go. All right, we'll get into that uh, when we talk about China more. But 44 vowels, 61 Kates. Now four vowels make it through. You see the AP President Tyler already has a deck penetration, critical damage. Um, a 250 kilogram bomb hit that. Severe casualties from the deck explosion. Uh, this ship was worth quite a bit, but really, I mean, you lose a whole infantry regiment. And there's more, don't worry. Planes are, pro now, they're, now they're just hitting everything out here. The Coast Trader uh, was in here, the AK, that was carrying equipment. 
that's getting hit, torpedo hit, those are usually completely fatal. You know, it's one thing if you get hit by a bomb, sometimes you can survive that. If you get a torpedo into the side, that's kind of game over for most of these ships. Uh, Vowels approaching, attacking the wake the Fillmore. So we had the president Tyler, the president, they're hitting all of the past presidents out here. Uh, You can see a bomb hits it, deck penetration, completely on fire. This is just disaster out here. The kind of thing that there would be documentaries about this uh, on history channel. If history channel still had history on it, Uh, the president Fillmore is getting hit again. That was below decks. Uh, So they're just, piling on we also had a destroyer out here hey we're protecting against submarines which there was some submarines in the air there you see president polk so it's running through all 19th century presidents now uh we had two destroyers in here here's the mcdonough or mcdonough i'm sorry uh there's the president taylor i told you it's the entire 19th century presidential roster is out here the ad dixie This is a destroyer tender, so I had three destroyer type vessels, ASW vessels in here. Um, Now the tailor is getting hit, ship side penetrated. Uh, I mean, this is just a turkey shoot. We don't we don't have any planes up and over the top of this. And I'm a little angry with myself of not being patient. But it's a fine line, right? Because if you're too patient, he comes down here, he takes Suva. And then what, then what do you do? You know, you're setting up in New Zealand then. Um, and so I tried to sneak them up here. Uh, you know, when I say patient, you got to wait until you have enough carriers to come run over the top. Or you've got a lot of fighters that can run long range cap here. We have yet to be able to get fighters up here. And I did have some fighters on these. I was trying to get them here. I've now gone to a secondary plan where... I'm trying to get fighters from Penrick Island to Pago with drop tanks and then Pago into Suva because I'm no longer trying to take transports out here. All right, let's just go through it. Uh, He hits a lot more stuff, but we'll read all about it. Uh, See, we're rescuing men here, rescuing 649 men, 48 men from a coastal artillery regiment. Okay, let's see what happened. 48 zeros were running the escort. We had Cates and Vowles coming in uh, as the bomber groups. Um, we damaged three Cates and one Val. whoop de doo We had the President Tyler, four bomb hits, one torpedo hit, heavy fires, heavy damage. We had the AK Coast Trader, torpedo hits three, it's sunk. Uh, the President Fillmore, bomb hits four, torpedo hits one sunk the destroyer got out of there of course it did the president polk actually did not get hit somehow i think that you know hell i don't know the japanese just ran out of ammunition at some point uh this this destroyer torpedo hits one and was sunk the president taylor bomb hits one torpedo hits five sunk the ad dixie two heavy damage ap president jackson bomb hits torpedo hits sunk uh the shaw sunk Uh, President Buchanan, torpedo hits one. The President Monroe, torpedo hits four and is sunk. And the AK Idaho only has heavy damage. Yay! Uh, Okay, 5,911 men, casualties out here. Uh, And we did fish some out and put them uh, on the Polk, I believe. But the Polk is not long for this world either. So we lose an entire regiment in all those ships. Uh, just a disastrous, disastrous turn of events there. 19 Oscars uh, coming in. And now the aircraft land. Now um, the President Tyler sunk. And as if you read very quickly, it said that uh, we're fishing more of these men out. Uh, yeah, we observe an aircraft carrier now. So what happened was he was sitting right up here. The minute they got a a read that we were moving northwest here, he just comes around the corner and it's, you know, Death Star action. Now, we keep getting these reports of ships around Pearl Harbor. Uh, I think they're just submarines. And later on, in a few turns, we uncover all of his submarines out there and actually sink quite a few of them. But that's upcoming. Um, I told you I'm bad at keeping secrets. Uh, Yanan... We get three of the Flying Tigers up eventually against eight zeros. 
Let's see how that goes for us. Well, we have one destroyed, no Japanese losses. All right, he's bombing here southwest of Nanyang. 77 casualties for us there. One of the worst disasters uh, I've ever had in this game right there. I, I just, to lose a task force of that size, again, it's not critical. It's not, I would, no, it is critical. It's not fatal. You know, it's not like that would cause the Americans not to be able to eventually, you know, push on to the home islands. Um, but from a point perspective, I mean, that's about three, I don't know if it's quite that many, two to 300 points. It's a huge number. Uh, you know, the regiment, look, they're just pixel men, so I can talk about them as points. Uh, that's, you know, it's a it's a hefty loss, but you got a lot of American regiments. Uh, the transports, you've got a lot of American transports. You know, we probably already replaced, just in the few turns after that, the transports we lost. Uh, but from a point perspective, which it looks like this game would eventually come down to, uh, that is just a massive, massive loss. Uh, amphibious assault on WeWAC. I always like to say WeWAC. Uh, so the Japanese are unloading there at Papua New Guinea, uh, starting to take the northeastern part of the island, all up and down the island, uh, and eventually further push towards Port Moresby, uh, you know, take taking those islands that are closest to them, for, or those bases, I'm sorry, that are closest to them first. All right, attacking back into Clark Field here. And you can see the numbers click down. Now, uh, he reduces our fortifications to a one, and then he takes Clark Field. We are retreating back to Bataan. Uh, so he has taken Clark Field. So all in all, this was just not our turn um, I'm a little salty about it. That's why I gave it a few days before I did, <laughs> I did the video. Uh, I can tell you, we're, everything's on a much better footing now, but uh, after this turn, I was really pissed. I took, I took about a half a day to set up the next turn and said, all right, we've got to, we got to bear really, I, not that I haven't been bearing down, but we've got to really make sure that we don't have any uh, mistakes like that again. Okay, uh, he came in here 69,000 troops against 20,000 of ours. He outgunned us. He outtanked us, or AFVs. He had 2143. We had 298. You can see once everything went into it, including our fortification level, it came down to 18, 19, and 478. Um, he only took 706 casualties. Now, I that's just incredible to me he's doing a full-on assault on clark field 706 we're set up in fortifications and we've been sitting there pretty much all game building them and all of our people are set to clark field doesn't matter he just bullies us out of there it goes to show you how good the japanese troops are early on compared to the allied troops 67 43 we lost there All right, now we're expanding the fortifications, so we're coming to the end of the turn. Uh, we'll see uh, what other arrivals we have here. But all in all, just a, a, one of the worst turns I've ever had in this game, losing that task force. Uh, just, you know, the minute uh, I read the first message that popped up that said that we had spotted aircraft, I said, oh, no, go go back, go back. Uh, but that's like that's why I love we go games like this that all resolve at the same time. It just adds such a different element to the, you know, a more realistic element to the game, which is you've given them these orders. And for two days here, they're going to follow those orders. And if you mess up, there's no, you know, do-overs, rewinds, uh, uh, you know, go back. Uh, doesn't work that way. And it makes this game so much fun, in my opinion. Um, it just adds a whole different element to the game. So anyway, uh, Lodric, you know, is continuing his march. I would say overall in China, we're um, a little little bit behind where I want to be. Now, Lodric was talking a little smack to me saying China is lost. Now, that is definitely not the case. Uh, we're, we're okay in China, not 
great. I've certainly been in a much better position, uh, but we're we're fine in China, I think. Um, the real problems now are the islands of Pago, Suva, especially in Nomaya. Now that we lost all of those assets going into Suva, we also have to be careful because it just can't compound on itself. We can't keep sending things up there saying you know, oh, I messed up. Now I really got to get stuff in there. We've got to be even more cautious trying to get up there. I think the aircraft I'll be flying, I'll be island hopping with the aircraft out there. Uh, and you can do that. And I'll show, I'll talk about part of that in the setup in an upcoming episode. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it's fun to watch. It was, it's not fun as a player, I'll tell you that. But anyway, I, I hope you liked it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. We'll do the setup uh, post this turn uh, on our next episode. Anyway, Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.